Hey guys, this is Mr. Crayfish, and welcome back to another modding tutorial. In this tutorial today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to add block properties. And what I mean by this is, say, setting the light level of the block, so how much light does the block give off, um, how hard is the block, so how long do you have to keep hitting the block before it breaks, stuff like that. Now, I said I was going to do armor, but I needed to get this out of the way before we actually continued on with that. So I'm sorry about that if you were looking forward to it. But we've got to get this out the way, and it's going to be useful to you guys either way. So I've added in a simple cheese block. Now, I just did this in my own time just because I didn't want to do it on tutorial. You guys should know how to do this if you've followed my previous tutorials. So we're going to go into that block cheese class, and you can just do that. It should be in your um, package explorer over here, so block cheese or block whatever you've got. And then after this super... Um, method here, or we'll super, yeah, the super method. What we're going to do is we're going to type in this dot set, and then we've got these bunch of up with these properties that we can actually set. Now, the, I'm going to be going through the ones that are actually useful. So we're going to scroll down here until we get to set block unbreakable. Double click on that, semicolon at the end there, and basically what this does is this will set the met this method will set the hardness of the block to negative one making it indestructible so it's going to make it like bedrock so if we go ahead run the game and I'll place a couple of these blocks down in creative mode <clears throat> and I go into game mode S you see that I won't be able to destroy these blocks so they're indestructible now set unblock unbreakable doesn't mean that it's resistant to TNT it just means that you can't break it so if I go ahead and show you this if I put TNT next to it you see that it just explodes and disappears. Now, if you want to protect it from TNT and make it unbreakable, what you have to do is, if we go back into the code here, we'll do a new line under this, under that, and we'll type in this dot set resistance, and then we'll type in 2000.0f, and this will make it resistant to TNT. So we'll run the game now, and we'll place down another cheese block, we'll put TNT next to it, redstone, you see that it doesn't get destroyed now. So that's basically how those two work, so the resistance is the resistance to explosions, 2000 will make it absolutely full protected from any explosion. If you want it to be mildly protected, you could do 20 and a actually 15F and that will make it mildly protected from explosions, which means it still could break, there's still the chance that it could, but then there's a chance that it might actually not break. So 15 is a good value to put in there if you don't um, want it, if you want it there to be a chance that it might break it. Now I don't want this to be on my block, on my cheese block, so I'm going to get rid of both of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in this dot set, we're going to scroll down here, and we got this one called set hardness, and this is basically how long it takes to actually break the block. So this needs a float value, so a float value is say 2.0f, and 2.0f is quite um, hard for a block. A log is actually 1, so 2 is a bit harder. Now this is actually quite confusing, this time here can change depending on the material that you actually use on the block. Yeah, this gets really confusing. So um, if we go into the material class here, we go back into our mod class, we press control, click on material, we've got these methods here um, that have this um, method at the end here called set requires tool. Now what this means is that these require a certain tool for the block to actually drop. So if we set it to rock, it means that we need um, a pickaxe to actually be able to mine it. Now there's only five materials that need this, so the rest of them don't even. They will drop 100% of the time. So the hardness, depending on the material, if it's if the hard, if you've got the material as rock, and you set the hardness to 1.0, and you're using a diamond pickaxe on it, this is going to break quite quickly. But if you've set the material to say cloth and you've set the hardness to 1.0f, This is still that's going to still break quite quickly, but you're not going to require that diamond pickaxe. So it's kind of confusing, uh, but hopefully you do understand. But we're going to set it to 1.0f and make sure the material is cloth, because that doesn't really require 
any special tools to mine it. And then we go into here and we place the, the cheese block down. We go into game mode. Oops, game mode S. And we try and break it. You'll see that it takes a little time to actually break it now. And we can break it with a hand and actually get the block back. Now what I mean by how the material actually changes the hardness, what I'll do is, is I'll set this material to, to rock. Alright, I'll run the game and place this down and look how much longer it actually takes to destroy the block. A lot longer. And watch this, doesn't even give me the block back. So depending on the material, um, it kind of sets some more properties for you. So rock, it won't give them the block back unless you use a pickaxe, which we'll get right now. So game mode C, we'll grab a pickaxe out. Go back to S, and if we break it now, you see that it breaks really quickly, and we can get the block back using a pickaxe. So it depends on the material, um, which will change the hard hardness of the block. Now we're going to set the hardness of my cheese block to 0 0.5, and I'm going to put the material as material dot cloth because I just want it as that. Now we're going to do a new line under the set hardness method. There, I'm going to do set. Scroll down here, and then we've got set harvest level. Now this will require um, a certain um, level of tool to actually be able to harvest the block. Now again, this is quite confusing because it does depend on the material that you actually use. Um, it only re it can only work if you've actually got that set required requires tool on the materials here. So the only ones that will work are rock, iron, anvil, snow, and crafted snow. So they're the only ones that will work with this set harvest level here. So what we're going to do is in for the tool class just type in pickaxe and then the level we're going to type in the level that we had we defined over here so it was four. Pop that in there and then put a semicolon on the end and then we also need to set this to a rock because it will only work if it's again has that set required tools on the material. And you'll see that um, if we place this down and we try to throw it with a diamond pickaxe, it won't give the block back. But if we go into game mode C, we'll get out our cheese pickaxe and another one of these blocks. Go back into S, place that down. If we break it with a cheese pickaxe, you'll see that we get it back. Because this harvest level is 4 and the harvest level for diamond is 3. And we need a minimum of 4 to get it. So this is why it can mine it. So hopefully that explains the harvest level. It depends on the material. Remember that. Um, I'm not actually going to have a harvest level on it because I want it to be be able to break and uh, be able to break it with my hand. So we're going to do a new property. So we're going to do set. We're going to scroll down here, and then we've got light level. So this is how much light the block gives off. So if we do 1.0f, that's going to give out the maximum amount of light that we can. If we do zero, that's going to give off nothing. Um, now, I want this to give off a little bit of light, so I'm going to do 0.1f, save that, run the game, and if we uh, time, time set night, and then we place our cheese down, um, okay, it gave off literally nothing. Let's go back, and we'll set the light level to 0.2f. And if we update the block a little bit, you see that it just gave off a tad of light there. I'm not sure if you guys saw it, but it just gave off a tad, teeny bits, teeny, eeny, bitty light. Uh, if we go into our light level here, um, where is it? Where is light level? Um, Alright, I see it. If you see there, next to the biome planes, it has that BL, and then it has one there. If we walk away... We got BL0 over here. Um, that basically means the light level. So we got one light level right here. So that's just giving off a tad little bit of light. Now we'll just set this to, to a maximum just to show you what it actually looks like. So 1.0F is the maximum, I'm pretty sure. If we update the block, there we go. Look at that. A nice a lit up cheese block, which is awesome. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of light in that. So I'm going to do 0.2F. I'm going to do a new line under that. I'm going to do another property, and we can do set uh, light opacity. And what this does is it tells 
uh, Minecraft how much light is allowed through the block. So um, if we do 1, this will allow 15 light levels to pass through it. If we do 16, this will allow um, no light levels to go through it. If we do 10, that will allow 6 levels. If we do 8, that will allow 8 levels to go through. It's basically um, the light level calculation is 16 take x equals x2 whatever. Um, so if we t if we did, if we got our initial light levels, which is 16, and we take five levels off it, it's only going to allow 11 light levels to go through it. So let's put in five there. Semicolon at the end there. We're going to run the client, and I'll show you what I mean by this. So we'll place. Um, we'll get a a freaking glowstone out and what we'll do is we'll place that in the wall there and then we'll place this block in front and you can see that it's blocked out the light now but it's still leaving a little bit coming through so that just basically stops light 16 is the max uh, 1 is uh, 0 is the minimum so you can play around with that however you like now we're going to do another variable or property we can do set scroll down here and we've already covered resistance. The last one is set step sound. And this is where we can actually set the sound of the block. So um, what you can do is, is, if that doesn't come up, just type this dot, and then we've got a nice list here. And I might make the sound of my block be sound type snow. If we do that, save game, run it. Can you run it, run it, run it, run it, run it, run it, You see that if we get our, our, our cheese block now and we place it around, it sounds like we're placing snow. And when we break it, it sounds like we're breaking snow as well. So that's how you set the sound type. Now we've got two more, or a couple more things that we want to go through. What we're going to do is these properties are set a little bit different. So what you want to do is come under this public cheese um, constructor here and what we're going to do is type at override new line and type in public boolean is opaque cube oops spelled that wrong opaque cube two brackets at the end there squiggly bracket new line and then what you want to do is if your block is transparent so that means your block has a transparent texture. Uh, what you want to do is you want to return false. Now this only applies if you do have a block with a transparent texture. And this is like glass. Glass is see-through. So um, what you need to do for glass is you actually need to um, set this is opaque cube. And you want to return false. And this basically tells the rendering system not to do that stupid x-ray stuff. And I'll show you right now. So if I set this to false, I run the game, it will fix the rendering error. But then I'll set it to true, and you'll see what happens. Place that down. And as you can see, I'm not sure, time set uh, 1600. Far out. You'll see that we can just see the grass under it. But what happens when we set it to, when we set it to true? Let's do that now. You see that we got that blue horrible thing, and that's basically x-raying into the ground so we can see the lava. Yeah, look at that. <coughs> I'm eating something and I choked on it. Ow. Ow, ow. <coughs> and look at that, we can see lava under the ground. So if you want to stop that, make sure you set is opaque cube to false. So that's basically going to end off this tutorial today. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. Um, hopefully you've set some properties for your blocks following this tutorial. Um, if you are enjoying the series, make sure you hit the like button and tell me that you know you're enjoying it in the comments. If you have any ideas for tutorials, let me know in the comments. And I will see you guys later. Bye bye from the Cray Meister. I'm not really a Meister, but yeah.